Travels it in motion. And cuts in trouble. The blitz by Kennedy. Picks up a ferocious hit. Knocked down at the two by Kennedy. And this kid can hit. Pumps once, throws, and it's picked off at the five-yard line by Kenoy Kennedy. This is former Razorback Kenoy Kennedy, and you're listening to The Morning Rush. I've been looking forward to this interview since Kanoi got back with me on Wednesday and want to welcome him in this morning, former Razorback, former NFL safety. Kanoi, thank you so much for making some time for us here on the Morning Rush. No problem. I appreciate you guys having me. So I found this interesting listening to an interview you did, how when you were getting recruited back in the day, Texas a and Baylor, Kansas, there were some other schools that had offered you, but they wanted you to play offense. And Arkansas was one of the schools, I think the only school that recruited you to play defense. And, and I found that kind of compelling, Kanoi, because there's so many kids today that want to play on the offensive side of the football. They think there's more star power there. Why did you want to play defense in college and then eventually the NFL? Well, I mean, cause, uh, initially it, it really didn't matter, you know, because I, I actually uh, played both, both sides of the ball. And, you know, you know, before I finish that story, you know, kids today want to, like say, want to specialize in one side or the other. Oh, I only play offense. Or I only play defense. But, you know, they don't make them like they used to anymore. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, you know, it, it, it really didn't matter which side of the ball I played. Uh, you know, I went on visits with an open mind. Um, and, you know, some schools told me that, uh, you know, I can play whichever side I pick. Uh, but when I came to Arkansas, they was like, no, we want you to play defense you know we don't want you to we don't need you to play offense we want you to play defense and so uh you know i went in with an open mind and uh came out you know loved the school loved everything you know coach coach washburn jim washburn recruited recruited his butt off you know when he recruited me uh and uh every note that he sent me was handwritten you know it wasn't any of those uh mass produced type letters and uh and that that meant something and you know and i was like man you know uh they really want me there so that that's kind of what made me choose to, to come there. And uh, and so the, the rest is history. Kanoi, you think about the track record of Arkansas safeties lately. Steve Atwater obviously stands out. You guys both played for the Broncos. Uh, Ken Hamblin. I know Tony Buda played some linebacker, but played safety as well. And then you look mm-hmm. at this kid, Jalen Catalan. Not, not the biggest, but that kid lays the wood like you used to back in the day. When you watch him play, do you see any of yourself in Jalen Catalan? Oh, no doubt, man. You know, and I, I, I get excited when I watch him play. You know, as a matter of fact, I was talking to, uh, I did an interview with Ken uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, you know, and we his name came up, uh, Jalen came up, and I said, man, you know, uh, to kind of describe his game, you know, if you put Steve, uh, Ken, and myself in a player, and, uh, that's that's the kind of player you have, but you know he's a smaller guy. So you know if you you compress our files and you get the zip file, you know if you guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he's a, he's a, he's all of what we have in a smaller package. So I call him <laughs> the zip file of the uh, Arkansas great safety. So man, I mean, uh, uh, the kid can play, and I love everything about you know his game. Kanoi, when you watch football today and you see the evolution of the offense and the in the in the spread, the spread to run the three and four wide sets, the one back sometimes empty. Uh, it, it's not the pro style that you went up against a lot uh, with a lot of times two backs in the backfield. Uh, uh, what's your view of that offense, and and, and, and how would that uh, have changed the way you would have pr- approached it today? When, when you watch the game, uh, what goes through your mind seeing these offenses that are out there in today's game? I think that, you know, to get, today's game is a, is a chess, ma- chess match, you know, uh, you know, if if you show your hand too fast on defense, you know you got coaches in the press box watching. You know you move, so they pause the. It's almost like uh, pausing the game and you know recalling the play. So, um, I mean, it's different. And then also the defenses, you know, uh, coordinators and all that, you know, have to be ready. So I mean, you know, uh, man, it's, it's the game today is, is totally different. You know, and I think you know even when we played, uh, it was different. So if you if you ask a guy that played in the you know the seventies. 60s, 70s, you know, they would say the game has changed from, you know, when I played. So, you know, it's all about adapting. And, uh, you know, I think uh, it's it's not it's not DB friendly uh, today's game, I tell you that much. But, yeah. uh, you know, you, you have to learn to, to, to adapt. Yeah. 
it, it, you watch the game, and, and this comes up on our show a lot, and I, you know, I'm sure you get asked a lot about targeting plays and, and targeting fouls that, that are called. Um, that, wasn't, that wasn't even a term or, or part of the game when in your day like it is today. What, what are your thoughts on some of the, the, the safety aspects and the rules they've changed um, you know, to, to, to make the game safer, but uh, to certainly take some of the harder hits out of the game? Um, it, it's taken away some of those highlights, but taken away some of what the game was, was built on in your day. What are, what are your views of, of how they've transformed, uh, particularly uh, what made the game from your position? Yeah, I, I think uh, that, you know, it's, it's a fine line uh, between targeting. So I, I think they need to review everything on a, a case-by-case, uh, you know, Sometimes you have bang bang plays, and you know the guy didn't have intent. But if you say, "Oh well," but the helmet's touched, so uh, we have to call it targeting. So I think you know if they're going and replay, uh, watching the replay of every uh, called target, you know I think they need to, you know, kind of just do it by case by case, and not just necessarily by the rules. Now I get it because there is life after football, and I'm there. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you you know what you're getting into when you sign up. Uh, for playing football. So, um, you know, and it's kind of like, you know, if if you're a boxer and they say, well, we want to see a good show and we want to see some hard punches, but at the same time, you know, we don't we don't want to see you hit this certain area of the body, but you also want to see these guys go full speed. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. And uh, so it's one of those deals, though. You know, it's, it's the rules now, so you just kind of have to find a way to get around it. Kenoy, this is Clay Henry. I, it's always good to hear your voice, and I, one of my favorite all-time Razorbacks right here, guys. I've got to go back to your uh, recruiting commitment story, and Jim Washburn told me that out of the blue, you guys were, there were four of you, I think, that were on a recruiting trip to Texas A&M. Is it true that y'all called Jim from the Texas A&M coach's office? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we called them from the office or if we called them on their plane. Uh, it was <laughs> it was one of them because <laughs> we actually uh, and I, I, I might get the story backwards. So I don't know if we even flew because I think it was me, Brian Smith, Randy Garner, and one more of the guys that was kind of from four, the East yeah. Texas region. Yeah, that was from this East Texas region. So we all was on the same plane. Uh, and, uh, you know, we was talking, it was like, well, where are you going next? You know, so we was like, you know, we was going to Arkansas, and then we was on our way to A&M. Uh, so we was on the recruit trip back to back. And then, uh, so, you know, we kind of got to know each other. And so we, on the, you know, we on the plane or in the office, I can't remember which one, but, you know, we was kind of talking like, hey, man, what you go do? You know, where you going? Where you thinking? Which way are you leaning? So, you know, we, we was talking, it was like, man, going to Arkansas like where if you going I'm going it's like where if you going I'm going it's like you know and it kind of was like you know we we all kind of hit it off and you know kind of made up our mind you know um and, and you know like I say once again the rest is history on that part yeah Washburn told me that's the only time in history that you got one phone call and four commitments <laughs> but you know what and, and I think that's kind of uh goes back to uh, the kind of atmosphere we had when we was playing, the family atmosphere, uh, what we what we tried to build, and you know the way we uh, went about life around there. You know, we was we was we was all a big family, and uh, kind of showed in the way we played. Man, we we love being around each other. We we took up for each other, and I kind of think that makes a difference because you know you don't want want to let your brother down, and when you don't want to let your brother down, I think you play that much harder for him. So. Yeah, it, I guess it was about a week after signing day. I was going down the hall at the Brewer Center, and Coach Washburn says, come in my office. i got to show you something. And he cues up the tape, and this was back in the days of tape, and or, or, or video, I guess. And yeah. and he he says, watch this guy hit. And I think it was, what, was it Wiley? Uh, Wiley. Wiley, yeah. Texas. Uh, and oh, yeah. There was, and it was a maybe a pass into the flat to the back, and this guy comes roaring up, and I thought the guy was dead. Kenoy Kennedy, yeah. you hit that guy, and his helmet flew, I think, twenty yards backwards. And yeah, it, it was it was crazy, you know. And I, uh, you know, I'm we 
we're still trying to find that tape. I think uh, after uh, uh, the tape starts spreading around, people start stealing the copy. So there's no copy around. And if you come to Terrell, Texas today, you can't find a copy of the hit because everybody stole a lot of copies. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, I hit the guy. You know, this was back in the day when you can you can hit, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But it was actually a, it was a tight end drag. So, you know, they uh, I played corner at the time. I actually played corner and receiver in high school. And, uh, you know, never played safety until I, you know, came to Arkansas. So, uh, play corner at the time, and, you know, and I would always cover the best receivers. So, this, the whole week in practice, you know, they would tell us that, that they love the tight end drag, tight end drag. So, you know, I'm covering my receiver. He ran me off, and I saw the tight end drag, and I was like, yep, we've been practicing this all week. I said, okay. So, you know, I, you know, I love to intercept the ball, but I also love to hit. So, uh, you know, the quarterback let him out just a little bit too much, but he caught the ball, and, man, you know, Caught him right underneath the chin, you know, you know, and I'm not all about hurting guys, but I, you know, I'm a physical guy. Uh, but yeah, his helmet came off. Um, all the pads inside his helmet came out of his out of his helmet. Uh, <laughs> he hit the ground. He kind of bounced up and slumped over with his legs crossed, uh, and the whole stadium was quiet. Like you can hear a pin drop, and I was like, "Oh man, I killed this guy!" Like you said, you thought you killed, uh, you thought I killed him, but I thought I killed him. I, too. It looked I was, like he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, so, but long story short, you know, uh, he he was end up end up you know breaking his jaw and uh, oh, a couple other things, but you know, man, I was like, "Oh man, I don't, I don't." I don't. And so my mom, <laughs> my mom told me, "He's like, hey." Uh, Son, you need to stop hitting these guys so hard because they have a mom too. Yeah. You know, what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know they, they they have they have family that they got family they need to go home too. And I was like, well, I, you know what? Okay, you know, so I, you know, I would pull off a little bit, but not too much. But I was like, you know, <laughs> they, they know what they're getting into, so you know, they need to get on the quarterback for throwing that ball over there. Yeah. So, so <laughs> did you meet that guy later in life? Well, I, I never met him, but uh, I. Uh, know some friends that know them and uh you know they said he's doing all right today you know so i kind of picked up on <laughs> hey, him, make, hey. sure, make sure he was good he might but be the say, one yeah he, he, he might be the one getting rid of the tapes he might be the one getting yeah. rid of all them tapes down there <laughs> <laughs> i never thought about it like that <laughs> oh man could well, you're joking about your mom like telling you not to hit guys so hard ah, man uh, based on the highlights i saw you and then the with the the broncos and the lions uh, against reggie wayne chambers and the kentucky it man I, I i don't did you really pull up when you started playing college in the nfl based on those hits no, not really. You know, I, you know, I, I, I wasn't a hard headed kid, but at the same time, it was like, Mom, you know what? Hey, I got, I got rent to, to pay, and uh, this house note that that this house I bought you, I got to pay that. So, you know, this is why they brought me here. So, uh, I got to keep doing what I do. <laughs> We're talking with former Razorback Kenoy Kennedy here on the Morning Rush. Kenoy, one of the things that you probably come to know about Clay Henry is he hates the Texas Longhorns more than anything. And you concluded, oh, no doubt, <laughs> you concluded your career at Arkansas with the dominating twenty-seven to six win over Texas in the Cotton Bowl. What was that like as a Texas guy to finish your career out beating the Longhorns? You know, all the guys, uh, when we found out we was playing Texas, all the guys in the locker room that was from Texas, um, you know, we were fired up. You know, we took it took it personally, you know, uh, took it personal that uh, it was like, hey, you know, uh, not that, you know, uh, all of us wanted to go to Texas or anything, but we took the personal because Texas, the Longhorns were, you know, the school of Texas. You know, if you talk about Texas, you know, the Longhorns was the school to talk about then, you know, so um, – we took it personal, and then come to find out, you know, when you're on, you're on campus and you start hearing about the history of the uh, Texas versus Arkansas game, you know, going back to the Southwestern Conference, you know, you, you kind of you kind of buy into the history and what it, what all that game meant. And so, uh, you know, we took it personal. And, uh, I mean, when I say we were fired up, especially on defense, but, you know, we were fired up. And, uh, you know, to – uh, come in and play the way we did against that uh, that team. You know, it was awesome. And also, my 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 fiance, which was my my high school sweetheart, my wife. Now she was going to school to, at uh, Texas. So uh-huh. you know, uh, I tried to get her to come to Arkansas, but her parents wouldn't let her. So that was another little deal that I was like, well, yeah, you know, since you didn't want to be a Razorback, now 
you know, I'm going to take it out on your school. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, it's still together uh, after all these years. Yeah, we, we're still together. We're, we're still together. That's awesome. Yeah, so, so now I now see uh, all the, all the uh, sports teams she wears are the only Razorbacks. She don't own a long horn shirt in the house. That's the way to do it. Kanoi, before we let you go, <laughs> since we're talking about Texas, you, you, you Arkansas does get to play the Longhorns in Fayetteville this upcoming season. How excited are you about that game? Oh man, I'm so excited, and I, and I, this is my first time hearing that. So yeah, but I'm that that would be awesome. You know, uh, I've had season tickets for the longest, uh, so you know I try to make as many as games as I can. Uh, we didn't make any of this this past year with you know with all the COVID stuff, but man, that that's going to be awesome. You know, and uh, get get with some of the guys, man. We talk about those old old, old history and the games that we played back in the day, man. You know, and uh, that would be awesome. Well, hopefully what they do this season will be reminiscent of what you guys did to the Longhorns in the 2000 Cotton Bowl. Kanoi Kennedy, former Razorback, former NFL safety for the Denver Broncos and the Detroit Lions. Kanoi, we really make, really appreciate you making some time for us all on the morning rush, man. No doubt. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, Kanoi. We'll, we'll catch up again uh, maybe game week of, of the Longhorns and the Hogs. That, that'll work. I mean, right. we have to, uh, Thanks, we have Kanoi. To, uh, Bring me some. Bring me some of that fish you catching out there, Clay. <laughs> All right, I got it. I got you covered. Oh, we can do that. Gosh, uh, that was fantastic. Good, I love how day. I love the uh, his his at the time girlfriend and now wife. Yeah. That 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 part that tentacle of the story was phenomenal. Yeah.